Chris Bumstead recently announced he has kidney disease and was hospitalized one month prior to this year's Mr. Olympia. So today, I'd like to be very careful, but I'd like to discuss what this condition is, because it's quite common, actually, and it's important for me to talk about um, all aspects of medical care for people in the fitness world. I want to be very careful here in implicating that Chris is using any form of steroids or performance enhancing drugs because I don't know that. that not, this is not what this video is about. This video is about bringing education to a medical condition that may be out there, obviously, for yourself or people that you know and love, and that I'm going to discuss the condition itself, the causes, the treatments, and what could worsen it. So if we do this properly, we will end up helping people and it's educational and that's freedom. So education is freedom and knowledge and that's why we're doing this. So what condition does he have? What condition is it that Chris has and many other men and people have, but it's more common in men, is IgA nephropathy. It's known as Berger's disease. And I've seen many of these, unfortunately, in my 20 years as an internist, both in training in the hospital systems and out in the streets. So this is an autoimmune condition of how the body is producing antibodies called uh, immunoglobin A and it gets hung up and it doesn't, it, there's something going wrong and it gets lodged and it ends up attacking and, and, and causing disease and dysfunction in your kidneys, localized to the kidneys. It's actually the most common type of primary glomerular nephritis in the world but it's one of the most common types of renal disease that ends up leading to end-stage kidney disease. So the most common type of, of disease that leads to end-stage kidney disease is going to be diabetes and hypertension and other types of, um, of nephropathies. So th this is common too, and you see this more in men. So he was born with this. This is nothing that he caused and he did not bring this upon himself. Nothing he did caused this. Classically is diagnosed in men or young people when they're in their 20s. So he's unfortunately right on board with this. And how do symptoms, doc, they ask. So how does someone present with this? Well, they present with a variety of symptoms and that's gonna be potentially pain in the abdomen and the flank, obviously. Um, fatigue, malaise and fatigue, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and then they could present with hematuria. So the, the, there could be blood, and a lot of blood actually, very dark colored blood in uh, the urine. And you'll even see sometimes uh, protein in the frothy urine. Although this is not a classic nephrotic syndrome, this is a nephritic syndrome, and for all the medical experts out there, they know uh, what I'm referring to. So this is, this is more inflammatory and you'll see more hematuria, but the proteinuria will be there too, and especially when it's more progressive disease and it's getting worse. Um, high blood pressure is a presenting symptom and swelling of the hands and the feet, classically the lower legs and ankles will swell. I think Chris talked about some of this stuff. You know, I, I know he did because I watched the video with uh, Ron Harris and, and muscular development where they talked about his case in detail. He was gaining weight, he was trying to lean out, and he was actually holding a lot of water, and that was because of this, and he went to the hospital, fortunately, and they nailed it down so they know what's going on. Um, so symptoms, that's symptoms. The diagnosis itself is going to be clinical with the hematuria, the proteinuria, the hypertension, the blood pressure, that is, the physical edema and the, the pain, uh, and they're going to look at labs. They're going to look at the renal labs. They're going to see an increased creatinine, right? And you're going to see a decrease in the estimated glomerular filtration rate. And this is on every lab. That's why people, you have to do labs. We have to be always uh, monitoring labs. And then in the end, the confirmation of the disease, it's mandatory to do a renal biopsy. Mandatory renal biopsy only by a doctor that knows exactly how to biopsy those kidneys. And they don't biopsy kidneys easily. They're looking at the, cl the clinical case, his creatinine, his whole clinical picture, and they're, they are already 
they're pretty clear what he has when he's presenting in the hospital or in the clinic at all around the world. And then they're going to get an expert um, pathologist, a renal pathologist, or a good nephrologist, and they're going to go for um, that uh, kidney biopsy. Now, the cure. What's the cure? There is no cure. There's no cure. This is a lifelong autoimmune disease, and the nature and progression of the disease is based on so many variables. There are variables that you can control, and that's why I'm doing this video. So the variables of the progression of this disease are based on the, the sum of the parts and the other medical conditions. So hypertension. Hypertension will advance this disease like it will advance other types of disease, of kidney disease and heart disease. Cholesterol. I did my research on this. Of course, I've seen this and I've known of it, but I'm not a nephrologist, so I want to make sure I did my reading and, and understood this very well and, and very accurately before I present it to the world. Cholesterol. Hypertension, cholesterol. Protein in the diet. So when you're having the proteinuria and you're actually taking too much dietary and supplemental protein, and that could be a problem. Other nephrotoxic toxic agents, there, there are many, uh, there are many uh, agents that are nephrotoxic in the medical world. But in this case, at this point, I'd like to, to discuss, and again, this is not relative to him. This is hypothetical if a person, and I've seen this, has this condition, men, and they use performance enhancing drugs and obviously steroids. Let's run the list. Anabolic steroids could worsen this, in my opinion, and there's no studies on this. Cortical steroids are used to treat him. They're used to treat an acute exacerbation. I found an interesting study that shows that for people in a double-blinded scenario, in a very large study uh, in 2017, that the steroids, the cortical steroids, methylprednisolone, by the way, it's like prednisone, and there's IV forms of it, and there's pills. He was probably on some IV in the hospital, and they gave him prednisone to leave the hospital with. They tapered him. That is going to protect the actual kidney, but it can worsen the, the state of the individual person because it can lead to side effects. And the efficacy of knowing exactly what's the best to do is not easy. So they, they will treat it with the steroids, but try to be very focused and get them off and then cool it down. So again, you don't want to exacerbate anything that would lead to worsening or irritating the kidneys in this manner. So you want to keep the blood pressure great. You want to watch that. Nothing that increases blood pressure should be used if you want to stay away from destroying the kidneys and ending up in dialysis and a kidney transplant, which is probably inevitable if you live long enough with this disease, but that might not be true. I'm not an expert in this. And the ones that I've seen have end up all in renal transplants. So um, it's lifelong and it's progressive. So you have to be under care of a nephrologist. This is very esoteric. You have to have a nephrologist working with this. And so other agents, for an example, steroids, anabolic steroids. Well. They're used with high protein diets. So that could be bad if you're a fitness bodybuilder or powerlifter or strength trainer using it as a pad. So that's, in my opinion, the steroid itself may not be renal toxic, but the association of building muscle mass with high protein intake may be. Next would be human growth hormone. I don't know, human growth, again, I'm hypothetically thinking this right now because there's no studies on this, growth hormone it's not known to be nephrotoxic, but again, growing muscle tissue, would that cause uh, a worsening of the disease? Because we know that if we're going to measure the creatinine levels, you're going to see a permissive increase in creatinine, therefore a decrease in the estimated GFR, because you have more muscle mass. It's very difficult to tease out what's going to be a cause, a cause etiology versus just a manifestation and a lab abnormality that's a lab abnormality, but there's really no worsening of the disease. Back to what, I, what I'm thinking here, clenbuterol, that's gonna be a beta, that's an adrenergic nervous system stimulator. I, that could increase blood pressure, that could worsen. Insulin, insulin, we use it for diabetics and people that have end-stage kidney disease all the time. So that should not be renal toxic. But again, if you're getting, you're using insulin and you're bloated and you're holding water and you have edema and you're hypertensive, 
that, that's not good. The last piece guaranteed to be destructive for this condition, diuretics. So we see a lot of men in the bodybuilding community uh, end up worsening and furthering the demise of their kidney, perfectly normal kidneys in these circumstances mostly, um, because of diuretic abuse and use. So it's very interesting. It brings up thought to me when you're in the hospital and I'm seeing someone who has heart failure and kidney disease. There's two doctors on board. One doctor is a cardiologist who wants to use diuretics to get the fluid off because the heart does better. And then the other doctor doesn't want the a nephrologist is fighting the cardiologist because he doesn't he, he wants a permissive uh, fluid uh, state in the vasculature system and on the kidney because the kidneys do horrible when you over diurese them. So diuresis is not good for, for the kidney, not at all, no way. Not Lasix, hydrochlorothiazide, careful with this even, it's a weaker diuretic for blood pressure. So these are my thoughts. Um, the, it is interesting, the most common cause of death, which is up to five times more common than the average person is cardiovascular death. So again, the blood pressure, the cholesterol, the whole demise, the cardiorenal works together. So this is a presentation of what is IGA nephropathy. This famous man, this very nice, decent man, young man comes out and tells the world he has it. What is he gonna do with it? Um, that's up to him. In my opinion, and I'm sure his doctors are telling this, he should retire because if he's going to be competing on the high levels just with the diet itself and the stress and the diet with the high protein intake and what has to be done with, with um, other agents and supplements um, and the aggressive diets and the dieting and, and the, the water loading and losing water to be toned and to have this dry effect, that's going to progress the disease. I'm sorry, it just, it will. So that's what I have to say. And I hope that this helps the world. And I hope that anyone who has this disease understands that. We know that there are some classic famous bodybuilders that had other conditions of kidney disease called focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, FSGS. And we know that they probably definitely accelerated their demise of their kidneys into requiring dialysis and transplant um, because they had a condition and they accelerated it. I just want people to know this. This is science and this is also my opinion. I want to be very careful because I don't know Chris and I assume he's not using steroids and he's being as safe as he can, um, but I need to present this to the world. So thank you very much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.